What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bar, P90X, Einstein Bagels, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with John Corcoran. Rise25 creates 100% outsourced VIP special events for software companies or conferences, basically help bring together their highest level customers to connect and collaborate in one place. Uh, we do them all over the country. You know, this past year we did them in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego. We have one coming up in San Francisco. You can find out more if your community qualifies. Go to rise25.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Brand Driver. Brand Driver helps e-commerce brands grow online sales. They help you to protect your brand on Amazon. I actually did a demo with them at the Kehi Show, which you guys I met your, you guys at. And I love the dashboard, it creates visibility so you can see all your reviews and questions that need answering in one screen. Big companies use it, but they have small company pricing. So I am excited to introduce you to today's guests. We have the founders of Hello Water, Rusty Jones and Tom Bushke. Hello Water is fiber infused with, I don't think there's another drink I know of on the market like this is fiber infused. It's zero sugar, five grams of fiber to help with a healthy lifestyle Hello Water is a fresh delivery system for fiber with, I like to say, inspiring flavors, inspiring names, because they have uh, flavors called Dance, which is their orange mango. They have other delicious flavors, which you check out on their website, which they call Smile, Laugh, Live, Love. Of course, we want all of those things. And they can be found in Target, Jewel Asco, Woodman's, on Amazon, and many more retailers across the country. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so I want to start off with, you guys have really interesting backgrounds, each of you individually. Um, so I want to talk about that, but first of all, how'd you guys meet? Well, was it at a uh, Wisconsin on... Badger game? Uh, I, <laughs> no. I wish it was. <laughs> uh, we actually met on the road. Um, I was uh, helping consult for another non-alcoholic brand and was doing a presentation at a distributor down in St. Louis. Rusty was, was working for a different non-alcoholic brand and doing the same presentation at the same time. We met there and we kicked it off and knew right away we were going to be great friends and that's where we met. We stayed in touch and a few months later, you know, we'll get to the story, but a few months later this, the opportunity came about. I called him up and said, should we do this? And without any hesitation, he said, let's go. So you know each other for a few months at that point? Few months. Yeah, we Thank actually you. met. We'd actually met three times prior to deciding to go. We we met at the distributorship, uh, and then he invited me to the Kehi golf outing uh, within a week or two after that, and then I invited him up to a golf outing with all of my friends. And it was those three times we said, we've seen, we we know enough, we've seen enough, we complement each other so well, and we said let's do this. Yeah, you both have a lot of experience in the beverage industry. Um, so what was the opportunity? What did you see at that point when you said, it's time to do this? From my standpoint, uh, so I've been a nutritionist for about 15 years, and I've created some other drinks and some, some different protein shakes and things, but I always, I always look at the space and I go, I've got to create something that people actually need. So yeah. I, started, I started around the idea of an appetite suppressant water. One of the main ingredients, obviously, in appetite suppressant is fiber. So this was this had been on my mind for a couple of weeks, but I hadn't really done anything yet. Uh, and then I went to a conference, uh, an ECRM conference, and Nielsen came in and, and did a data dump on us and showed us what millennials and baby boomers alike are looking for in attributes in their food and drinks. And the biggest surprise that I saw was both millennials and baby boomers really felt the need for fiber being very high. It was the number one attribute, even over protein that is and vitamins. Strange. It was, it, I, I, I knew baby boomers would be there, but I didn't think millennials would be there. So as soon as I saw that, it clicked and I'm like, okay, we're going to start formulation. 
and I started the formulation two days right after that, just completely jumped into it and said, let's do this. So that was the concept behind it. And as I was formulating, I kept thinking Rusty going, this guy knows this is marketing, this guy knows how to, how to get out and hustle, and this guy knows how to sell. So that's As when you I can see, up. that's what he's doing right now. <laughs> he's, that's right. he's at an event yeah. selling. Yeah. That's, when, that's when I called and said, uh, you want to do this? And, and he jumped in. Why do you think, yeah, so, yeah, real quick, why do you think millennials care about fiber? I would never have guessed that. I would never have guessed that either. And, and to tell you the truth, and Rusty can probably, he sees it more on the ground, but, but when we mention fiber in this drink to a 25-year-old, they're all about it. I didn't, I didn't value fiber that much as a 25 year old, but I, I think the media is really pushing hard mm. the fiber aspect and how it's related to weight management. And the more fiber you have, uh, the more full you're going to be or the less you're going to eat. And I think that's where the connection is, is coming in. Mm. Rusty, you added that? Rusty, what were you going to say? Yeah so, yeah, so where I come in is, you know, we sat down at an Einstein bagel in, you know, northern Illinois and he brought me these formulations and, you know, at that point it had like, I don't know, 10, 12 different ingredients. And, uh, he, he said, Hey, let's, you know, let's put this appetite suppressants type of product out there. And the first thing you think of with fiber is like, well, that's not the sexiest thing to sell. So, <laughs> um, so I took a couple of days and went back and really just kind of looked at what was out there and everything was a fruit and a logo, a fruit and a logo. You know, I come from a couple of brands that were just like that. It was a fruit and a logo, whether it was a protein drink or a coffee drink or a kombucha drink. And it was the same thing. You know, it was a me too everywhere. So we took this inspirational, you know, emotional branding and put it in a premium juice bottle. Um, and we were able to find a way to, you know, make it shelf stable and have this great function as fiber that everybody needs with, you know, gut health being this number one function, this number one call out these days. It is. Uh, we thought that. Hey, we've got we've got something here, and all we hear is wow, great packaging, love the concept, but as pioneers in a category, you still got to show proof of concept. So that's kind of where we're at uh, in 2017, and then really rolling into a big year in 2018. It it really just comes with you can't just be a me too beverage. You can't just say hey, I've got the next function, and I'm going to put some flavor into it. So our goal is really just to build this fun lifestyle brand and inspire people into health. And to living better throughout the you know throughout the way. There's a couple things I want to dig into, and I know um, from watching another, from reading up on you guys, team has been a big contributor to kind of the, the success and the launch. But I want to kind of take the evolution of the product first. You know, obviously, Tom, you being having the background in nutrition and everything, and then Rusty, your initial take on the original formulation. Take me through what did the first product you created look like, even if it was just in your kitchen, and then I want to kind of talk about when the flavors came in and, and how it progressed. So that first original formulation, what was that like? Yeah, so with, Tom, go ahead. With my, with my background, I know better than to try to formulate it in my kitchen, so <laughs> I, I have some relationships with some flavor houses uh, yeah. across the country. Yeah. Um, so, so the first formulation came in and it, it was probably five times as sweet. It was colored. At first we thought, okay, let's make a colored one like a buy or a vitamin water or something like that. Uh, and there was only three flavors to start. And it was your lemon lime and your mixed berry and your, and your cucumber. No, real quick. So were you, did you write those flavors down or did you just give them a concept with the flavor like when you originally went to the flavor houses i, I wrote them down and discussed it with with my contact at the flavor house okay you know we looked at we looked at what would taste good we looked at trends and and then we came up with the three flavors okay so this was it was and i and i know the dates um, very well it was august 2nd when i reached out to the flavor house for the first time we received our first samples in September, it takes about a month to get to get the first iteration done. So in the beginning, maybe second week of September, and I had I, I did so. So obviously, when you do this, you drink them and then you go back to the flavor house and you give your feedback and say, "Here's what we need to tweak." So we did another version, and then that's maybe two, three weeks later. That's when we, we met at Einstein's in, in early October, and he got to taste that version and talk about the concept. 
So, so I want to hear really your yeah. I want to hear your original impressions, um, Tom and then Rusty, what your impressions were. You felt the original samples that came back were, were too sweet. What was your what was your feedback to them? Yeah, they, they were definitely too sweet. Yeah, the, and the then biggest you did thing, not like coloring either. You did not want color. Yeah, we ended up going away from color uh, when we finally ended up hooking up and saying, looking at different trends of reports, especially by millennials, saying millennials want want everything to be very transparent, very simple ingredients, everything to be all natural. So that's when we took the color out. We said, let's not, we're not hiding. We've got a great drink. And if, if color hides things and some other competitors use that as, as one of their attributes, let them use it. But we wanted to be very transparent. Yeah, literally. And that's when we yeah, had taken the color out and cutting down the sweetness. But we did this about, we went back to the flavor house back and forth probably about eight times. It took about eight iterations until we landed on, on the formula and saying, that's it. This is the moment. Mm. So... Rusty, what was your initial impression? You're at Einstein Bagels. You're sipping on some, I don't know if you call it well, aloe water at the time, but. No, nah, it was, no, at that time it was, uh, what, what were we calling it? Uh, Bushki's, um, uh, <laughs> what did you call it? What was, uh, spa water. So spa. At that time it was Bushki spa water. Yep. And uh, we didn't have a name at that time, but no, the first impression was, okay. Um, you know, I had to learn about fiber and saffron and all these other ingredients that, in you know, what they meant, you know, obviously, you know what fiber does, or at least, you know, it's healthy for you. But the more, you know, I dug in from a brand manager standpoint and what the benefits were and how and it was amazing. We learned that over 97 percent of Americans don't get their daily fiber intake. And that right there was astronomical. We couldn't believe that. Wow. Here's a function that, you know, almost everybody doesn't get enough of. And when we dig some more, we learned that, you know, Oh, if you are getting it, you're getting it with a ton of sugar, you know, whether it's in a nutrition bar or your cereal. And then by the time you get to the pharmacy aisle and you've got some of those, you know, your grandmother fiber products, then it's, right. it's not too late. But it's, you know, a millennial doesn't want to go to the pharmacy aisle. They don't want that. Ensure or like Metamucil or yeah, something? Yeah, they don't want yeah. Metamucil or Benefiber. Right. But we've learned that 25 to 35 year old male bankers are, you know, taking sticks of been a fiber putting in their water while they're at the office and females are doing it the same so right away we're like wow this is and nobody was using it you know we saw a couple fiber waters pop up here and there but didn't have the legs or you know for whatever reason but from a flavor standpoint we knew that we wanted to be a, a happy medium between you know at that time you know buy was really coming on the scene with dr pepper snapple um and then we knew hint water was doing really well and we felt like there was a, a happy medium of flavor that the consumer is missing out on. So that's kind of what we got down to. We we're that happy medium. Um, and then and, and then having a function that nobody's utilizing that's so important. So, again, we just say it's this fun, fresh delivery system for fiber. How hard is it to make it taste good with the fiber in it? Uh, this day and age, the the technology and how they're how they're getting us the fiber is is much much better. So we can we can honestly say there's no texture, there's no taste, there's no aroma. You would never guess that there's five grams of fiber in there from that standpoint. Yeah. So it, it's getting it's getting much better. There were eight or seven iterations to get to the final one, and then the eighth one you have the final version. Is your what does your process look like? Is it just you two tasting it? Do you bring other people in to get their opinion, or is it people in the flavoring house that actually taste it? How do you, you know, come to that final version? Yeah, it's yeah, certainly have. not the scientific approach <laughs> on our end. It's, it's him and I tasting it first, yeah, and going, do we like it? Do we not? It's it's our families tasting it right after that and keeping keeping it close, and then family will friends. be honest with you. You know, they'll be like this. Tom, what they did will. you do here? This is horrible. <laughs> they, they will. They, they definitely will. And I, and we always say, you know, don't try to don't try to not hurt our feelings because it's gonna right. it's gonna end up in the end. So be very honest. And we knew, I think we knew when the adults, when nearly every adult said this is really good, good, and then every kid loved it. Every kid that we gave it to, not expecting them to love it because it doesn't have any sugar in. Uh, it, yet it does have some sweetness because of our proprietary sweetness, all natural blend. But when kids started to love it too, we go, okay, I think I think we got. It. And and to be honest, it's never final. We're constantly tweaking every time we go into production. Right. We're constantly tweaking a little bit here and there and listening to what our customers want. 
But that's that's to the point where we were like, okay, let's go. That and time wasn't on our side either. So we did this very very quickly. We if if, if the thought went in my head on, on August second, we had it produced by March second. And we did everything in the middle from formulation to packaging to cost of goods to raising money. It went very, That's very quick. quick. I don't know how many people I don't know how many people are able to get to market that quick. But if you don't hit that March time point, you miss all the category reviews, you miss the whole summer, and it would have taken us back six months. So we pushed and pushed and pushed and, and we feel like we we've done a good job. How many flavors did you launch with? Three? Yeah. When did you come up yeah. with the other ones? Because you have more yeah, than three. Yeah, we launched those out, what, June? Yeah, so we launched with three. We were on shelves by Memorial Day, and then we already saw uh, you know, a, a great success and getting great uh, feedback. Uh, we knew we wanted to have another two, if not four, flavors to come out, um, just from a uh, visual standpoint and a selection standpoint on the shelves. You know, getting three SKUs as opposed to five SKUs your you know sales increase and your uh, awareness increases. So I think it was uh, 30 days later. We already had the formulations and knew what flavors were next. But 30 days later, we produced that. And another two, four weeks, those were on shelves as well. That was quick. So what are the most popular, what are the top two most popular flavors? Yeah, it's kind of all over the gamut. I mean, being barely a year old. Um, so smile and dance uh, from a retail standpoint. You know, uh, grocery are number one and number two, but then cucumber lime or love is number one on Amazon. So, hmm. uh, and that's our number four in retail. Yeah, and smile yeah. is the mixed berry one. Yeah, smile right? mixed berry, uh, laugh lemon lime, live pineapple coconut, uh, cucumber lime love, and dance orange mango. At what point do you decide to have fun names like this instead of just mixed berry? Let, yeah, let me. I mean, let me and Go ahead, bud. Then you can answer this, Rusty. But when he, this was all Rusty's idea, and when he called me and, and pitched me on this idea, I really sat down. I'm like, I, I'm not completely sure I want to go this way. <laughs> you want to have our logo be super tiny on the bottle, and you want to have these big long words. I go. It, it took me. It took me at least a night or two, and then and then him and you know him convincing me a little bit more, and I'm like, all right. He 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 really had a. A very strong argument behind them and the reason to do it. I'm like, let's give it a shot. It's been one of our, one of our, our best compliments because it's so unique. You know, he'll talk about the zigzag approach that we do, and yeah, that's, that's what we live for. Yeah, that's really what it comes down to. You know, Tom and I, you know, we stopped watching Sports Center a lot and read a lot of podcasts and read a lot of entrepreneur books. And you know, one of those books was Zag. I uh, forget the author's name, but it basically says. You know, while everybody's zigging and there's so many Me Too brands, you know, there's only so many molds out there for a bottle um, unless you go create your custom bottle that costs, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that we didn't have at the time. So we took a different approach and said, hey, let's go find, you know, we found this, you know, really premium juice bottle that, you know, Blueprint and some other brands before us had utilized. And it's just, you know, sleek and nice and premium looking. And then, you know, again, that research that showed, and again, you know, I was in some of the brands that it was logo was as big as you could get, and it was the fruit that was next, and then maybe it said protein or coffee or kombucha. Uh, so I kind of wanted to flip it on its end and really call it out from a, you know, as a young brand, it's hard to get attention on the shelf next to vitamin water and some of these other big guys. So if you can stand out and then get discovered, getting someone to pick it up and then being educated on it is, you know, two thirds the battle. So and we were in this time of millennials, you know, they want, they want to, you know, whether it's a cause marketing effect or some type of emotional connection to a brand, you know, I really just thought, hey, here's these great words of affirmation that people use every day that, you know, brands spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to be a part of this conversation. Why not just start the conversation with those words, you know, and it became more of that um, share, you know, share a hello water that that sharing concept. So let's share a smile. Let's share a dance. Let's share a you know a, a, a laugh and a love together. Um, you know what you'll see a lot coming on in our you know upcoming marketing assets and marketing campaigns. But it was just that simple conversation piece. And then Hello Water really came out of social media. It was already a conversation that was on Twitter. You know Tom and I were looking at what brand names we should call it. 
and I go on Twitter and I type in hashtag hello water and all of a sudden thousands of these hashtags popped up and they were mm. saying literally what we were trying to do. You know, mo most tweets were, I'm done with soda, I'm done with Coca-Cola, I'm done with Pepsi, hashtag hello water. Mm. I'm done with the cake, I'm done with the sugar, I'm done with the, you know, whatever, hashtag hello water. For whatever reason, consumers know that, hey, I need to be healthy, healthy this month. The one thing I know I need to consume is water. And hello being, a, you know, a conversation piece, we connected to the both of them. We found out that, you know, was it Class 32 copyright or you know, registered trademark was available. So we uh, we took advantage of that. And then that's kind of where, where we're at. Hello Water, live better, inspire health. How hard was it to get that domain? That's, a, that's an amazing name and, and a great domain. Two well, we words, out, easy to spell. <laughs> right. You know. From a domain standpoint, it wasn't available. So we had to... From a domain standpoint, it wasn't easy. We had to go to China, and it took multiple weeks, and we had our uh, marketing agency kind of help facilitate that because none of us spoke Chinese. Someone uh, in China That was a fun it? little process. Yeah, China owned it, but uh, for a you know low, low fee of XYZ, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Your so, firstborn but, child? Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to add so. to that, from a trademark standpoint, yeah. it, was all about, it was all about timing. Too, right so when you you file for for trademark you go to your attorneys and you say do I have a chance or or is is there no chance is there some chance or can I definitely get it or do I have a good chance of being opposed and we were producing labels in order to do a March 2nd production date which was our first production date we had to produce labels February 8th I'll say it was like the first week in February and we went to the attorneys because we just got in investor money on February 1st and in that one week, we said, what's our chances that we can do this? Because we're going to print labels in about three days. And we don't want to go to the market with something that potentially could be could be opposed. Yeah. And so they said, I think you got a good chance. Um, let's give it a shot. And it's all worked. We, luckily, we're very grateful uh, that, that the U.S. Uh, Trademark Office granted this to us and no one opposed. So. We are, we are very happy to have the, uh, the Hello Water name and design. It's fantastic. You guys did this in a very compressed period of time. So how do you get on shelves so quickly? You go from idea, concept, to on shelves. Yeah, yeah so and let me talk about real quick, Rusty. Go ahead, bud. Just getting to the point of the March 2nd production date. Yeah. So Rusty and I really started working together the second week of October. And I'm pretty sure his wife thought that he was dating me. I had never met her. I had never met his family. Cheating but on, we had cheating talked. On him, yes, yeah. we had talked so much in those three months. And she's still going, who is this guy? Are you sure you want to do this? And, I mean, we, we, we probably watched hundreds of hours of Bebnet live videos because there were so much little bits and pieces you could get. Uh, so many books we read. I mean, I don't know how many thousands of hours we probably talked in that three months, but uh, it was a it was a really fun time because we had a lot of momentum going, we had a lot of energy going, and we knew we knew that this is what we wanted to do, and and we knew we had a drop dead date to get it done. So that was a lot of fun. But if you want to talk about add to that or talk about how we get on store shelves so quick, yeah. So from that speed to market was you know Tom had this background of already being able to produce product. Um, so we were able to get that done really quick. We've got a yeah. you know a very unique uh, co-packer opportunity and situation that you know we're proud of, and we're able to uh, you know get to market a lot faster. A lot of uh, co-packers, you got to wait in queues for six, twelve months to, especially if you're using dairy these days. So luckily, we live in Chicago, where um, you know a lot of the independents have open buying days, and you can show up on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, say hi, present your product. And if they like it or not, you're on shelves or, you know, you, you've got to get distribution, but you can be on shelves pretty quickly. So that was us. We we produced on a Monday. We drove back in a snowstorm from uh, the East Coast to Chicago and we were selling on a Tuesday and we probably had 100 points of distribution within the first seven days. Wow. So and then that opened up a big national uh, distributor for us. And then it's just kind of been wheels up and fast forward from there. Today we're in a approaching a little over 2,000, 2,500 stores uh, with the Northeast coming on board. 
about a thousand in the Midwest and more growing every day. Um, and then, yeah, and it's, it's just been kind of this whirlwind of finding this great combination of teamwork and packaging and product and taste. Taste wins all day. You guys really do comp complement each other well. Yeah, we figured that out early. It was, wasn't hard to figure out. And to, to add to that story, so he had he had set these buying meetings back in Chicago, and literally, we didn't have time when the when the finished product was going to be got, done to ship it back LTL and then go pick it up and take it. We had one day to get back, and so we rented a van in March, threw about 150 cases, as many as we could, and drove back to Chicago. And like he said, we hit around Ohio and and. and uh, the southern part of the, the lakes, we hit a snowstorm. And we were going about 20 miles an hour for about three hours and switching off and doing whatever we had to to get back. And that kind of set the pace for this is what we're willing to do for this brand. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna make it. We're going we're gonna to deliver. And if we say we're going to be there, we're going to be there. Being in Chicago, snowstorms are no joke. I, I get it. Um, you know, Tom, you talk about this in, in one of the interviews and in, you referenced this uh, a couple times, uh, nonstop hustle. You, you said that maybe a couple times. What does that look like for, for people who don't, uh, can't visualize that for each of you? So what, yeah, what it means is what happened those three months is continuing to happen today. He's the first person we're going back and forth with on text or email and talking all day long. And we've just split up our responsibilities. This this is what you have to do to, to get to move the the, the 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 progress forward, and this is what I have to do. The nonstop hustle. You know, one of one of our biggest taglines between him and I is it's always progress over perfection. We're just trying to make progress, we're not trying to be perfect. And in this business, if sometimes people will just sit back and will try to do things absolutely perfect or right and they'll end up waiting too long. And we're more the people that, hey, let's just jump right in um, and make progress every single day. And, and we'll beat people out because we do have nonstop hustle. And that, that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. Talk about the team. So initially, it's you two. What does the team look like as you grow it? Yeah, so to, today it's, it's really just Tom and I, uh, you know, from a day-to-day -day standpoint. And we have a marketing director, Jax, uh, who's at home in Chicago, and she takes care of a lot of our social media, our special events. Uh, really, just you know that kind of tripod effect to where you know Tom's working on the business side of things. I'm working on you know brand management and sales, and then we've got Jax who just takes care of everything else, and you know she's uh, been huge for us. And then we've got you know we've got a great uh, strategic park partner in um, IBC, which is uh, was it Innovative Beverage Consulting. Inter Intercontinental. Intercontinental. Intercontinental, that one. There you go. Very close. Uh, we've got a great strategic partner, and then we've got uh, you know extended sales force from brokers and part-time uh, sales directors out there, kind of do some key account calls and things like that for us. But really, day to day, it's you know maybe three to five of us, and then Tom will talk about you know really what's the uh, fire behind the engine is our you know our board of directors and our investor team who is top notch. Uh, one of the most sound invest reports that I, I think you can have as a young uh, startup. So, yeah, it, it yeah, really talk, is. Talk about that. Fortunate. Go ahead. How do you talk about that? Yeah, the board of directors and investors. How did you? I mean, it's it's sort of I don't know. I feel like one of the, it's an overnight launch success after ten years, right? You guys have both been in the industry for a long time, right? You both have a lot of connections and, and knowledge. How do you put together a board of directors and how do you find the right investors? Yeah, it, it really started uh, when I when I founded Rainforest Beverages back in 2009 and I was naive enough to think, hey, I can make a beverage and get it on store shelves. And if people knew what it took to do that, they would, I guarantee they would never try. It, it, it would be worth it. Uh, so it really started then and, and in my mind it was strategic to get to one person who if he or she invested, others would, would look at that and go, okay, if he invests, I'm going to invest just because of his credibility. So it was really finding that one key investor that led to two more investors. Once people found out those those three people were involved, it led to, to five more investors. 
and we went, you know, we went through this process with Rainforest and had a had a phenomenal group of investors. And I'm, we're very fortunate that the majority of them have come back and invested in in our new, in our new venture, Hello Beverages. Are there certain board of investors or board of directors that you, uh, certain person you look to for a lot of advice? What's some good advice you've gotten from some people? And they're they're definitely not afraid to give advice. That's for sure. Uh, these guys, we look for strategic investors. We don't just look for money. So everyone that we have comes from the beverage, has a beverage background, whether that's uh, in, in beer and, and beer wholesalers. I mean, we've got a couple of beer wholesalers that are that are involved with us. Um, we've got uh, some people in transportation, beverages that are that are involved with us, and warehousing. But the main thing is everybody understands the beverage world and the beverage industry and what it takes. So there's really no surprises. They're a phenomenal group of in investors. We keep them up to date uh, with investor updates uh, at least once a month. We do conference calls, and whoever can make those conference calls or come on once a month. So we couldn't be more more happy with the feedback that they're giving us. They, they, they will challenge us. On the last conference call, they don't just listen to what we're doing. They will get in there, and they will challenge us and, and give us pointers that only you know, 30, 40 plus years of experience will get you. You know, we say we have 10 years of experience. That's not much compared to, to, to the majority of our investors have at least 30 plus years of experience in the beverage world. So to, to avoid some mistakes by listening to them or tweaking some things uh, seems to be working for us right now. What uh, piece of advice do you remember that you think helped you avoid a huge mistake or a huge amount of maybe lost money or product issues? Anything come to mind for either of you? Russ, you got anything? Um, you know, I, I think it's just start small. I, that was the biggest thing. You know, again, a lot of these brands, they've got to go produce six, 12 months worth of products. And again, we're fortunate to not have to do that. So start small, make small mistakes, and correct them as opposed to spending a hundred grand on your first production and you're sitting on it oh by the way it's not something a consumer wants and now you're trying to pivot and it's hard to pivot when you've got all that inventory stacked up so we started small we've stayed small we still really produce to order um and i think that's what makes us so nimble mm. and I, again we're we're primed to have a, a huge 2019 you know we're, we're ending 2018 really strong but 2019 seems to be a, a pretty break, big breakout year for Hello Water. Yeah, and just two things I'll add to that real quick. Um, the two things that are on top of my mind are, are know your costs. You know, one of the investors goes, absolutely know your costs. Uh, well, I think a lot of people guess on what their costs are, and, and they, they price it out accordingly, and down the road they're realizing their gross margins are nothing. So absolutely know your cost. And the second is keep your burn rate low. That's probably one of the biggest lessons I learned during Rainforest is – Keep your monthly burn rate low because you're going to make mistakes. And if it's if it's if you're a lean company and you keep your burn rate low, you can get through those mistakes. If the burn rate's too high and you're making these mistakes, the odds are you're not going to make it a year or two years. So it'd be those two. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's key. Um, are there any particular distribution, any stores that you're especially proud of being in that was maybe a difficult journey because it sounds like you guys got in distribution pretty quickly in a variety of places. Are there any interesting stories of how you got into any of these particular uh, stores? Because you have some really large, large stores that you're in. Yeah, I think you know right away it's you know being able to have that hometown retailer in Jewel Osco, you know that backyard retailer to see it, kind of say, all right, I get it, and give us a chance, and you know in the first three months we've been on shelves we're doing over 35,000 units in those first couple months um, and doing really well and then I think you know Tom can speak more to this but Target to be a, a brand that's barely a year old and to be in select targets throughout the Midwest and Northeast uh, that that just doesn't happen so and we're showing you know kind of uh, astronomical sales and you know uh, turns from these test targets that we're in uh, so hopefully that uh, garners great. something bigger down the line. But but yeah, that was a uh, uh, Tom. I'll let you take that. Yeah, the the target approach was, uh, I mean, just a great opportunity. Very grateful to have a have a friend who was a store manager in Green Bay, 
and he actually saw it on, on Facebook after we produced it and said, hey, I think that's a perfect product for Target. Mm. Based on our packaging and, and concept and things like that, he goes, let's see if we can get it into my store. And it took nine months to get through all the bells and whistles of the Target system, but we got there. He gave us the most prime position in the store, and it was five shelves. It was a 50-case display, and it sold out in four days. Wow. And we, we go, oh, my gosh, we've, we've got something, right? Four days in Green Bay, Wisconsin. This is not Manhattan. This is... You know, this is not Chicago, LA. This is I've Green Bay, in, Wisconsin. I've lived in Wisconsin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So through 600 units in four days. So then he then he would write me and say, okay, we expect our numbers to you know to stabilize, to come back down and be normal. And every week he kept emailing or texting me, going, these numbers are not coming down. He goes, you got repeat buyers, you got something here. We can't keep enough in stock. Send more product. Mm. So that one target led to another target. We tested it out there. That target ended up doing better than, than the first one. And so that allowed us to to go up to the headquarters and target and talk to that buyer and say, look, we've got something that, that is a great fit for your for your target demographic. What can we do to add it to more stores? And that's when he, he opened it up and gave us the opportunity to go DSD and, and get it in any store where we had a where we had a DSD distributor currently. How do you explain that success in Milwaukee? Like you said, it's not like Manhattan, where there's people are looking for trendy, healthy stuff. So you know the saying is, if you can make it in New York, you make make it anywhere. But I think in the, this healthy beverage, if you make it in Milwaukee or Green Bay, you can make it anywhere. Green Bay. Right, Green Bay. So how do you how do you explain the attraction? It was the packaging and taste. Mm -hmm. So when they walked in, the packaging just hit them right in the face. And it got them curious. And we did a couple demos there, maybe I don't know, maybe five or six demos. And our normal demo, you know, we may we may get twenty or thirty bottles sold in a, in a two hour time period. Well, we get recaps after every demo, and we're seeing that that Ashley up in Green Bay is demoing and selling over two hundred bottles in two hours. So for whatever reason, maybe she's fantastic at what Bring she does. Ashley all over the country. Yeah. Yes, we need a lot of Ashleys. Uh, it was just it was it was literally the taste. It was the packaging at first, and then the t taste. Just adults loved it, kids loved it. The concept about the fiber really kicked in, and, and there's nothing else like it. So, so for us to it was the position, the packaging, and the taste. I think that really that really said to, to Green Bay, this is a great product. And buy it. And it's never been on sale. It's never been promoted. or never mm -hmm. been on sale. So when I visit your store or hang out with you guys in a year. Where where do you want to be? What where else do you want to be on? We're gonna see we're gonna see a lot more distribution. We've, we've got the 2019 plan. Uh, there's a couple of really large retailers, nationwide retailers that that we can't announce yet. Uh, that we're pretty close with. Um, but we'd like to you know we, we really for us it's about points of distribution. Right? People can enjoy it and benefit off of it if they can't find it. And so. We're fighting as hard as we can, and, and this nonstop hustle to get to get these points of distribution. And uh, in the next year, if we sat down uh, and said we made it to 5,000 stores, I think we'd be we'd be very happy. Hello, Water Kids. Let's talk about that a bit. You're you're at an event right now. Where are you? Yeah, I'm in Southern Illinois. So really, how Hello Water Kids came about is. You know, we've got, I don't know, a hundred or so Amazon reviews and, you know, four and a half stars and all positive response. But it came from, you know, I've got a three-year-old and Tom's got nieces and nephews. And what we kept hearing was, hey, can I get that smile water? Oh, I, you know, and the kids saw it, felt it was a treat. Mm. Little did they know that mom was sneaking five grams of fiber into their daily diet and they need that. You know, they're probably more deficient than anybody else because of the processed foods that kids are consuming these days so we kept hearing this and we kept hearing in his store we you know jacks kept hearing in marketing events and so we took a hard look at the kids aisle and we saw no real functional beverage in the kids aisle and you've got some great beverages out there that are getting getting lower in sugar but they're still you know 10 percent juice and 18 36 grams of sugar or honest kids is out there with a flavored water with 40 calories um, but there's no real functional beverage. Um, so we saw that and we really kind of 
we're going to give this a test. We're going to launch it Expo East, coming out with three flavors. And then, again, we're not just going to put a, a flavored functional water on the shelf. You know, we've got a whole marketing campaign to really educate the younger consumer, you know, that kid on the benefits of fiber and vitamins and the negatives of sugar and all these other things that are put into some of the drinks that they're getting. You know, most of them are out there selling toys with sugar. Uh, we hope that we bring really this true functional beverage that a kid will pick up, be able to put in their lunchbox, enjoy, and have that repeat consumer. Mom can get her five grams in the beverage aisle and still uh, get vitamins and uh, fiber in the kid's aisle. Totally. What about um, e-commerce versus retail? How popular is Amazon for people to get it versus going in the store and getting it? Well, I mean, it's, it's obviously, we do Amazon for, from a brand awareness standpoint, so anybody who hears about us across the country can, can go there right away and try it. That's the number one reason for doing it. We find it's, it's, a, it's tough to be profitable on Amazon because we are shipping water. And, it, it, and it's heavy. Yeah. Correct. So we find it with the, with the fees and with the shipping to be tough, but we want to be able to offer anybody in the country to be able to taste it. So we don't promote it hard on Amazon, to be honest, uh, because it, 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 it it's not a big money maker if at all. Um, we'd rather go to retail yeah. and we'd rather help out our distributors yeah. and our retail partners and have people know they can get it and buy one bottle at a time or two bottles at a time every day. And, and yeah, but it increases awareness, so they'll see it there, and then they'll probably just pick it up at their yeah. wherever locally they are. And what's interesting when I did my research is, oftentimes the drink brands or the food brands, it's when you look at the reviews, it's really difficult because everyone has unique tastes. You know, people one person will love it, and this, the same per, or a different person will drink the exact same thing and hate it. And you guys have actually really good reviews across the board on Amazon, which is a bit unique because you have such varying palettes. So that's, you know, it, it's great to see that, that, I'm sure that social proof on, uh, on Amazon also. Yeah, you can't win them all. We realized that early. It's difficult. Uh, I've, done, I've done some products in the past and put them on Amazon, like some protein shakes and things like that. And to your point, you could have two people sitting right next to each other drinking the exact same shake or same drink, whatever it might be, and have completely different different feedback from it. It's, everybody's palate's different. Some people it's not sweet enough. Some people it's too sweet. But we are, are trying to get the majority and, and deliver to the you know the 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 that, that can really enjoy it. And, and that's, that's about yeah. as, the best we can hope. So... I have one last question for each of you, um, but I, everyone should check out hellowater.com. Go to wherever you are. I'm in Chicago, so I saw you guys have Sunset Foods, there's Target, there's Jewel Osco, so check it out, try it. Everyone needs fiber anyways. Um, and the, the question I have for each of you is, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, is what's been a low moment that you had to push through, and what has been a proud moment? So I don't know, um, Tom, what's been a low moment, big challenge, and then what's been a proud moment for you? Sure. And I don't think it, it just referred to Hello Water. I think for me, the low moment was starting Rainforest, running it for five years, and then having to shut it down mm. and, and not being able to return uh, money back to investors. That was, a, that was a really, really hard time for me. Um, I felt horrible for not being able to succeed. That five years, I definitely got my butt kicked. And I knew nothing about the, the beverage industry prior to that. And so that five years was my education. And it was, uh, if, they say, if they say that you learn more when you fail than you do when you succeed, it's true. And you learn so much and you build relationships. And so from 2015 to 2016, I took that year off and, and did some consulting for some other beverage companies and then said, I got to get back into it. Mm. So to go with the high You're point is... You're a glutton is, for punishment or what? No. I, I, I <laughs> You're like, I just got whooped. I'm going to go back in. <laughs> Knowing what I, what I knew then yeah. and, and who I knew and I just had a, a vision in my head of I can do this again if I do it the right way. And so the low point would have been 
at the end of 14, not being, you know, having to shut down rainforest and admit it didn't work. Uh, but the high point is all the education, the people, and, and getting a second chance at doing this again. And we are so much farther ahead with Hello Water than we were with Rainforest. And in a year, we've done more revenue than we did in five years with Rainforest. So it pays to be with the right people and really get your education and then make it pay off. So why do you think, and what's impressive actually is that the investors in Rainforest followed you to Hello Water. Yeah. Why yeah. do you think that is? Because obviously this didn't work. What, what were some of the sentiments you were getting of why they followed you this time around? Just speaking from my behalf, I think it's my passion to put out products that people need like this. So it, in, in, in this time, I didn't come to them and we didn't come to them until we had everything done. The packaging was done, the cost of goods were done, how we were going to produce it, where we were going to produce it. The meetings were lined up. You know, Everything was done this time around, I guess, to, to make it easy for easier for them to say yes and they love the package you know we sent out we, we sent out emails and we sent out the package to them and when they saw the smile laugh and love that got their that got their attention and then they tasted it and i think a lot of their wives or significant others tasted it and said this is really good yeah. and and we all know that if, if i if we have a, a gentleman invested in and his wife loves the product that gentleman is going to invest that's usually that's usually how it works right so yeah, it, it, we're just we're just very fortunate to be able to, to pull that off and, and to have those, those rainforest investors come back and, and I guess believe in myself and introduce to Rusty and believe in Rusty and see the finished product and, and everything that we put behind it for them to say yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. It's oftentimes that's the the tough times. The good stuff comes out for the tough times sometimes. Uh, Rusty, what about you? What's been a low moment, and then on the flip side, what's been a, a proud moment? Yeah, I echo that. Uh, for me, with the passion I have that I put into other brands, the low moments for me are you know, being in the marketing side, and when things start getting really good and you get to the strategic partner, there's a lot of restructuring that goes on. So I've been a part of those restructures, and you know, had a lot of hours and a lot of holidays were passed over because... I believed in what I was working for and just didn't always make it to the promised land with some of those brands. Um, so being able to, you know, meet up with Tom and uh, build it, build something myself, I think is the high moment. It's, you know, it's our ideas. It's you, you see, yeah. you see those 3 a.m., you know, YouTube nights come to fruition. And then the first time that you, we actually saw this package and this product on the shelves at uh, Go Grocer and Sunset, foods in Chicago, I mean, it was, it, it was surreal, but it was also, okay, that was supposed to happen. What's next? We knew that we put in the time and we knew how to get there. Now it's every other day. It's okay. What's next? We got there. What's next? So I think, you know, for it's, you know, just, just show up as half of it and, you know, grind it out. Yeah. So it sounds like some of the low moments were like where you work, it wasn't your brand necessarily, and you worked so hard to kind of get it out there and it all maybe didn't work out. And yeah. a proud moment being seeing your actual hard work come to fruition. Absolutely. Because you have a lot of experience as far as, I mean, I saw some of the brands you worked with, like High Brew Coffee, Brew Dr. Kombucha, um, you know, LaCroix, Sobe. I mean, you have a, a large, extensive client list that you've helped. Yeah, I've been very fortunate to work with some of the you know, biggest brands in the industry, and with that came a lot of uh, a lot of education, a lot of experience that I'm able to roll into Hello Water. Love it, guys! I want to be the first one to thank you. Where should we point people towards online and offline? Obviously, you can go to Hello Water or any social media or any specific other places we should point people towards. Yeah, HelloWater.com. You can check out you know what the brand is. Uh, we've got a store tracker locator on there that you can find out where we're sold. We update that pretty periodically. And then, you know, shoot us a note on LinkedIn, you know, Tom Bushki and Rusty Jones. Uh, you're always willing to collaborate and wanting to hear more from other entrepreneurs and really share our story. You know, we could we didn't get here by ourselves, so we're happy to share any insight to uh, help that next, you know, ready to drink beverage or cookie pop or whatever it is that's going to make it uh, make it next. And, you know, 
we're trying to, you know, inspire health and uh, have consumers live better and hoping uh, we can inspire somebody to do the same. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Go ahead. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep hustling until this is a household a household brand and, and people really know about it and we honestly believe we, we have something and we have the right people behind us and the right team to, to get it done. So stay tuned. More Thank work ahead. You guys, check out Hello Water. Get your fiber in your water. Plus they probably spent an arm and a leg on that domain in China. So you should go to that <laughs> domain just for that reason alone. <laughs> but, right. Thanks guys. Thanks. Thanks, Jeremy. What I got you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See lights like a peach if you find the sand right now. I feel like a hundred grand.